Try, 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 because what's the worst that can happen? You're not gonna like what you tried? Okay. And just like I told them, I'd rather regret the things I did than the things I never tried. And I come back to it time and time and time again. It's patience and persistence. That's it. When I really look back at everything that I've done over the last 10 years, right? It's patience and persistence, patience and persistence. It's moving forward, holding, moving forward, holding, moving forward, holding, and just being consistent about everything that I'm doing across the board. Like patience has been the number one reason I've been able to retain the clients that I've had. And what's so fucked up is I'm the most impatient person that I know. I'm a real estate broker. I'm a salesperson. I want things to happen like rapid fire, nonstop, 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 nonstop. I want deals to happen today. I want them to happen tomorrow. I want my goals to be blown out of the water. And I have no patience for any of that. And that's okay because that's what's in my brain. That's what keeps me moving. That's the hamster in the wheel. But then on the outside, I'm patient. I'm patient with everybody. I'm patient with him, I'm patient with her, I let him speak, I let her speak, I let them yell, I let them cry, and I let it all happen, and I soak it all in, and then I respond. And that's what I talk about all the time too, right? The power of responding instead of just replying. So many people listen just to hear themselves talk so that they can reply with what they wanna say, with what they think that should be heard. For me, it's about listening. Um, but I started in rentals thinking that I was just gonna do rentals and that was gonna be it. That's how I was going to kind of make my business work. And then fell into sales because I had rental clients who then referred me to other clients. And then it's almost 11 years later. And I think um, if there's one thing that I could say as to like where my career has gone and then how I've done it is that I just showed up consistently every single day. Like people ask me, all the time, like, was it the TV show? Was it this, was it that? Was it your parents? It was not my parents, that's for sure. Um, uh, was it, you know, your boss? Absolutely, not my boss. If you've met my boss and know where I work, you'd understand. Um, was it this, was it that? And I think that the fact that I had my back up against the wall when I first started, and I just showed up every single day for three years. Listening, being patient with the person in front of you, and then responding whether it's a client on a $40 million deal that I just did two days ago in the Hamptons, whether it's my wife who is upset about something, whether it's the baby and my brand new baby is crying and upset. I have patience with her. I'm not yelling at her, I'm not shaking the baby. Like you have patience with everybody. Ever, 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 ever. Because my biggest fear in my life is wasted potential. And the only way I'm gonna squeeze all the potential out of my life so that the world can see it, so I can get projects on Central Park that I fight for for a fucking year, is by not quitting. Because I do not quit. You do not quit. What would you say is the best advice you've received? There's a jazz musician who said it on his deathbed, where he said, if you take care of the music, the music will take care of you. Because the, the road that we're in, whether you're doing loans or selling real estate or any kind of career, it's always up and it's always down, right? It's a roller coaster. Like you're gonna have good months and you're gonna have bad months. And as long as you show up and as long as you do the work, the work will take care of you, like by default. It's only when you start to feel negative and you don't do the show up. It's only when you start to feel like, oh, this was a bad month and you start pulling back and pulling back and not putting the work in when the work won't take care of you because you're not giving the work what it needs. Um, and it's like, I think that's why I work so hard. Keep going forward, take care of the work and the work will take care of me. Like we will figure it out, we will do more deals. It's not the end of the world. I can't be depressed about it. I can't be down about it, which a lot of people would wanna be, right? The market isn't shit. The market is just trying to figure itself out. Let's try to diversify, let's try to do other things and let's consistently write down what we have to look forward to because that's gonna keep us going and keep us going and keep us going. So if I look back at, at what has made me successful, both in work and in life, personally, from my baby, to my wife, to family, to all my clients, to my team, it's been incredible patience. While inside, staying impatient like a motherfucker and fighting as hard as I can, but showing the outside world, I'm the most patient guy you're ever going to meet. But I'm gonna stay persistent with you. And I'm gonna stay on top of you. And I'm going to come after you. And I'm gonna follow up with you. 
Remember my clients, have you read my book? If you've read the book, I talk about Sebastian, I talk about Mr. X. This deal that I just did for 40 million in the Hamptons, okay, there's a vlog that's gonna be coming up about that. That deal took me nine years. Nine years from when I met that client. Nine years. I dare any of you to tell me that you've completed something and you've been successful with something that took you nine years to do. One thing, one thing. I'm not saying, oh, I was in school for nine years. No, one client who I stayed on top of for nine years every other week because I had patience and because I was persistent with the work. And eventually, it happens just like that. The two Ps, patience, persistence. That is the definition of my game. Part of me thinks that I'm by myself a lot just because of the way that I think and that I'm a, a loner in just my, my, my desire to do more every single day and that sometimes I wish like I'd feel comfortable just kicking my shoes off, taking off my time, like running onto the beach, but it's just, just not the person that I am and, and I am okay with it, you know? But I, at least I know that no matter what happens for the rest of my life, that I will have been there in the moment. I will have shown up. I will have been there. I would have been on time. I will have been there early. And that's where all of my opportunity will have come from. Like right now, I'm in between appointments and gigs in Southern California. And I'm just pissed off about this idea of showing up and how so many people just don't show up. They don't show up on time. Being on time is another one of the things that you can do that's so easy that doesn't require any talent. Being on time is the number two thing that makes me successful when I really, really, really think about it. Like the people on my team who get the most business are the ones who show up, who I see in the office, who are there early and who leave late. Now listen, there are other people who are incredibly talented, who get business on their own, who can do things on their own. Most people can do whatever they want, right? Maybe they don't need to practice. Maybe they're not LeBron. But if you don't have that talent and you want to still be successful, then you show up. It's the most important message that I want to live with for the next year. Fuck, for the next decade, right? People spend too much time at dinner, on conversations, in social media, in the news, talking about things that they can't control, when all that really matters are the things that we can. I started thinking about this even when I was a little kid, like even when I was a teenager, you know, I realized, looked in the mirror, I can't control acne, I can't control my face. But what I could control was working out. I could control my body, I can control what I put in my mouth and what I don't put in my mouth. You know, that was like a big wake up call for me. So instead of spending so much time focused on things I cannot control, like the traffic, like politics, like the market, like the noise, like buyers who pull out of deals, like somebody who wanted to fire me and they won't even tell me why, I, fuck, I, don't, I can't control that. I wanna focus all of my time, all of my energy, every waking breath I have on the things I can control. Like the fact that I can get out of the car and just walk. The fact that I can go after new business every day. Like today, I have 18 appointments in the middle of the day. So when everybody else is freaking out, right? When everyone else is at a complete panic mode and everyone else is slowing down because of all the things out there that are happening that they can't control, the ones who succeed are the ones who speed up. The ones who do more and the ones who speed into the curve. I remember when I graduated, I had just taken the LSAT to go to law school and completely bombed it. At that point, then I had no idea what I was gonna do. So I said, you know what? Maybe that's life's way of telling me that I shouldn't be a lawyer, obviously. And I should just stick to what I thought I wanted to do, which was be an actor and take whatever money I've got saved up and move to New York City because I'd rather regret the things I did than the things I never tried. And I don't wanna hate myself down the line for not having at least tried that. Like this isn't for everybody, the advice, but 
I think you do have to be as well-rounded as possible because you don't know what direction life is going to take you on. And that's, that's me. There's no, there's no career path that I took. Like there's no one that told me, hey, to be successful by the time you turn 30, you need to graduate college, move to New York with no money, try to be an actor, go on a soap opera, be killed off the soap opera, not have money, become a hand model, then think about going home, but get your real estate license and rent apartments in Koreatown and Long Island City and slowly work your way up and then get on a reality, t like, t you know what I mean? Like there was, I just said yes to as many things as possible and tried to be as well-rounded as I could even after. Try, 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 because what's the worst that can happen? You're not gonna like what you tried? Okay. And just like I told them, I'd rather regret the things I did than the things I never tried. Make sure to like. Make sure to like the video. Click the little like button right now. It's gonna be really good for my heart. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And make sure to hit that little bell, that little bell, so you get notifications.